Hi, my name's Pat Fox. And what I'm gonna to talk to you about in the next 18 segments is the 425 defense. A lot of you have been with me and we've we've done the G defensive the G defense 425 system for the last 10 years. One of the things that has happened both defensively and offensively, the game has changed dramatically. So what we've done is we've revamped everything that we do defensively, and we're going to share those ideas with you over the next couple of days. So when we talk about the 425 and the G defensive package, people often ask me, you know, what does that mean? What does that mean? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about playing base defense so you get an understanding. All right. We play a 425 defense with the utilization of split coverage by our secondary. Plain split coverage concepts allows us for certain things to occur. It gives us tremendous carryover teaching from the G defensive package. And it allows our athletes to play with maximum speed. Carryover and repetition and skill mean increase in speed. Okay, when we have defensive scheme that is similar and individual technique that is similar. It allows our athletes to play with speed. We want that. It still allows us to get a ninth defender in the box and defend four verticals with great confidence. Split coverage has been a great addition for us defensively. So what I want to do is talk about playing a field defense. The first thing is aligning to the field, the field concept. Our stud bear field corner in free safety will align to the field. Our will, our wolf, our mic, our boundary corner will align to the bench. And the mic and the backer will plus and minus in order to balance the formation. Our wolf and our corner align at six and a half to seven yards at a level position. If it's a two by two formation, the wolf will line up directly over number two. And if it's three by one, he lines up at seven yards, stacking the end man on the line of scrimmage as an initial point of reference. But he has to be in a position to play his technique in order for everything to occur. Base defense is our starting point. Base defense is our starting point on how we teach all the fundamentals within the system. Even though we're, we run far more 4-2-5 than we do G defense now, the fundamentals for most of our players are still, still the same, and they allow our defense to hold up versus everything we see, versus everything that we see. Offensive football has dictated that we install an emphasis with 10 and 11 personnel. However, all fundamentals are going to be taught through the structure of base defense. So we're going to talk about this. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to talk about the alignment of our tackles. Our tackles use a slightly wider than sprinter stance. They play with the inside hand down. If it is a one back set, we set them to the tailback. If it is a two set back set, we set them to formation strength. We key the screws of the guard. And with our technique, we want to get off and strike, get off and strike. And for our maximum minimums, what we have to get from our kids, if the target shows, we strike the target and get our hips in the gap. If the target disappears, we bend. Some general thoughts, we want to play with our thumbs over our eyes. Hands and target take you to the place. If you use your hands and you get a veer block, you're going to bend. If you get a reach block, you're going to start to get your hips into the gap. We want to keep our hips back to avoid that body-to-body -body contact. Our defensive end, stud and will. Guys, we don't have eight deep on our defensive line. Even when we're at the big school, we didn't have eight deep. So what we do is some of our tackles play end and some of our ends play tackle. We have about six guys. So their technique is very similar. Our stance is slightly wider than a sprinter stance, just like the lineman. Our inside hand is down. Our stud will always align to the field and our will will always align to the boundary. Our ends have to both learn how to play a seven technique and a five technique now. They have to learn to play the seven to the three-man surface and a five technique to a two-man surface. One of our alignment keys is the tighter their alignment, their splits, the heavier we align. The wider they, their splits, the looser we are. And we key the man on to the lead, either being the fullback or the backside guard. We want to keep our hips back in a cheesesteak technique. And we talk about our kids, to our kids all the time. 
Get off and strike. You have to use your hands. Get off and strike. Get your hips in gap. If the target disappears, bend and attack the trap or dive. If you get a zone block, we want you to sit on the zone. Thumb over the eyes. Target takes you to the play. Hips in gap. Over here, you see our stud is in a seven technique, and our will is in a five. Our stud still has to learn to play a five, and our will has to learn to play a seven. Why? Because we line up to the field. We no longer line up to formations. What we want to do with our defensive line is we want to make sure that our, our stance, we have our tail higher than our, than, our, than our head. We want to reach out with our hands. we got a whole defensive line segment. We're going to help cover this. In our stance of our linebackers, we want to have our back flat. Alex might be a little too flat, okay? We want our shoulders over our toes, protecting our numbers. We want our eyes on our initial key. We want our arms relaxed, protecting our knees. We want a narrow base with our feet under our armpits. We want our knees, toes, and hips all in line with Z's in our knees. And we want high hips. We want high hips. From that good stance and the narrow base, our linebackers have two alignments. They either have minus or they have home base. All right? Our backer will always align to the field, and our mic will always align to the boundary. The backers will either play home base or minus. Home base, the backer is in a C split, and the mic is in an A stack. In minus, the backer is in a foot alignment where his inside foot is directly over the ball and the mic is in a C-split. The backers balance the formation. The backers balance the formation. We have a narrow stance, slight forward lean. We protect our numbers. Backer aligns to the field, mic aligns to the boundary. All right, what happens is this. If they give us a two-back set, and we get pro formation, everything is the same except we line up in home base. This is how we ran G defense for 25 years. If they give us twins, we bounce and we pull the string to minus alignment. So in 21 personnel, if they come out in 21 personnel, we're either playing home base or we're playing minus. If they give us pro into the boundary, we'll minus and we'll let our mic stay in that C split as our backer would be in the A stack. When we teach our linebackers, we want to teach them to read the cross-pull of the guard tackle bubble. When we talk about that, what we're talking about is we're talking about the outside foot and the inside foot of the guard and tackle. What we are looking for is a flash pull behind the center's tail. If we get that flash pull behind the center's tail, it's one of three plays. It's trap, counter, or bootleg. And all those plays, the near back lies. So we look for that flash fake, and we start with eyes low to high. And we read cross pull the guard tackle bubble to near back. Cross pull the guard tackle bubble to near back. If he gets the cross pull, if he gets the cross pull, the backer will run the crease. And he's going to run the crease right here. The crease is between the outside. It is between the outside hip of the center and the inside hip of the guard. And if this guy pulls, that center is going to turn all the way back. This guard and tackle are going to pull, and we're going to run that crease, and we are going to be over the top of that center's block and running in the void area. Your job isn't just, though, to read your keys and run the crease. You have to make a pull-pull call so your partner can protect himself from that big tackle and get his eyes on there and be able to play back to the ball if needed. If the pull comes the other way, the mic backer will run the crease, and he is going to be at the outside hip of the center and the inside hip of the guard if, if he releases inside. If he blocks straight on, it is a false key for our front side backer. So once again, on the cross pull, the backer has to scream, pull, 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 so the so the, his partner can pop out and protect, pr protect himself from the offensive tackle and tight end. Now, we have our linebackers take a gap side pop step. And by the time that foot hits the ground, you better know if there's a cross pull. If there is no cross pull, you are then reading the near back. My backer is a 91 player. 
That means if the near back is going outside, he is going to play a nine technique and get his heels on the line of scrimmage just outside the end. If the ball is going in this direction, the ball is inside of the mic backer, he will play a one technique. Well, what do you mean, coach? My backer is a 91 player. If the ball is outside of him, he plays a nine. If the ball is inside of him, he plays a one. He's a two gap player. My mic is a 31 player. If the ball goes outside of him, he plays a three technique inside of the B gap. And if the ball goes inside of him, he's a one technique player between the center, between the guards in the A gap. So what happens on this play? The ball is going right. The ball is going right. My backer is a nine technique. My mic is a one technique. If the ball goes the other way, my mic plays the first digit, he's the three technique, and my backer plays the second digit, he's the one technique. And that's how we teach our linebackers on how to read their position. Now, when we talk about linebackers, we give them some flexibility. We give them some flexibility in their alignment. We just tell them, hey, you've got to be able to line up and make plays. Now, Spurs. Spurs are my outside linebackers, all right? And what we do is in a field alignment, and it's two by two, my bear will prowl the outside of a four by four box if they are unattached. If number two is detached, the bear will line up head up number two at two yards. If it's three by one, we still put them head up number two. We still put them head up number two. Our wolf against 10 and 11 personnel in a two by two set will line up in levels. He will line up in levels. Same down here. And if they go three by one, he will line up stacked behind the tackle at about seven or eight yards. If he has to move over to be able to poach three, that's okay. He has to be efficient in where he lines up. If they line up in 11 personnel and the tight end is into the boundary, our wolf will stack like four and one yards off. He is keying him man to man. That is his guy. But if he blocks down, he's got to go support it. Almost like crack and replace. All right. If they go three by one into the boundary, our spur rolls down and we flip. We flip our alignment and we make a crazy Ivan call. And now the backside spur is in a poach alignment. And if we get a situation where we line up and we get an empty formation, the spur is in the deep half, the wolf is in the deep half, and the, the field side spur, our bears, head up number two. And that's how we line up. And you know what? We'll move when we blitz, but that's how we want to line up. When we talk about 2021 and 31 personnel, in the old days, we used to see an awful lot of this. So we taught our kids to line up at edges. So if we basically saw a tight end and three in the backfield, they were in an up alignment. We had them line up as close as they could to the tight end without being reached by them. If you had a tight end, if you had a tight end and in two backs in the backfield, probably, okay, probably you were going to see either twins or a flanker set. So we would have them stack one yard outside the tight end at four yards. If there was single width, we prowled at a four by four box. And if we had twins, we lined up head up number two at two and a half to three yards. And now we take our trips defender and we put him directly over number two. Technique. If we are in a support position and we are playing easy support and the ball is to our spur, they are going to support the ball on the proper angle. We used to spend huge time on this. What does that mean? If I'm getting like the fullback coming towards me, I want to meet him on his train track. I don't want to come upfield and create a gap. I want to meet him on my train track, four-fifths of my body on four-fifths of his body with my outside hand free. Okay? If the ball's away, I fold the backside A, I look for boot counter reverse, and then I start to fold and fit. If I am down in 20, 21, 31 personnel and pass shows, I buzz flat and run wheel. 
we have different forms of support. In easy support, it is traditional support used in zone coverage. In read support, our support is directly dictated <coughs> by the block of the tight end when the tight end has no width. If the tight end arcs, we establish a point and we play easy support. If the tight end blocks down, we spill the ball to the reading corner. And here's some of these alignments. Here's versus pro, here's versus twins, here's versus two tight ends. Our free safety. Our free safety plays in a free throw shooter stance. We love the high hips, the slight forward lean. We like the field straight, no stagger. If he has a tight end in a, in a, in a, in a, in a slot receiver, or an outside receiver, he lines up in the B-gap nest, meaning he's in the B-gap, okay? If he gets twins, he splits the difference. He splits the difference between number two and the end man on the line of scrimmage. And if he has trips, he splits the difference between two and three, and uh, two and three, and he starts on all these alignments in 11 yards, and he walks flat-footed down to nine. He keys number two. If number two is extended, he keys the end man on the line of scrimmage back to two. If our free safety gets run strong, he runs the alley. If he gets run internally, he fronts the ball and fits between the two fold players. And if pass shows, he uses his robber rules. When we talk about our robber rules, it's really simple. I'm the free safety, I'm flat footed. If number two is vertical, I am going to jam him with my inside hand. I'm going to hunt the hip and run with him vertically. I don't care if he's past six yards and runs a corner, you're with him. If he goes six yards, seven yards, eight yards, nine yards, ten yards and runs a dig, you have the dig. You have the number two receiver. You have the number two receiver if he is six yards vertical. If number two runs an arrow, you rob the strong curl. They run number two on an arrow, number one's running a curl. The curl is the man in the curl zone, not a fictitious person. It is the man in the curl zone. What we want to do when we rob him is we want to undercut that ball. And if number two is shallow, we are going to turn and attack whatever comes back the other way in the form of a dig. A lot of you have seen this slide in the past. That was one of my best drawings, so I keep it in. It's my free safety reads. The free safety, he gets them vertical. He's got them wherever he goes. He goes under. He's got the dig. He goes out. Jesse James robbed the curl. A corners, fellas, if you got corners, defense is so much easier to play. All right? They are in a free throw shooter stance. Hips a little bit higher than my free safety with a little bit more of a forward lean. Slight stagger with the inside foot back. We align at seven yards, and we are one side inside the receiver. On the cadence, we creep to nine and two, and we key the quarterback drop. All right? If you're a corner, you then work, for, you work down, off the line, on the line, back to number two to number one. And here's what we want to talk about. If you get the ball to you in a run situation, you are a run pass player. You are secondary contained. If that ball goes away from you, you are a deep fold and fit. You are the job saver. And in pass, you are a half field player. You also have to learn to play read support and be a, you have to be a tackler. You don't have to be a hitter, but you have to be a willing tackler to play corner. When we talk about playing the half field rules, the number one rule for our corner and cover five, if you're a half field player, is never give up the post. When Moses came off the mountaintops and he held the 15, uh, the 15 commandments in his hands and he dropped the third tablet, the 11th commandment, I know because I was there, was thou shall not give up the post. You stay on top of everything and you key number one back to number two. If both are vertical, you favor number one and split the difference. Never forget, you are a run player with crack and replace. So let's talk about run fits. This is just base defense. It's our starting teaching point. You know what? Are we going to play much of this? No. But it teaches our kids how to fit. 
And the number one thing when we get pursued strong is create that edge. We turn our backer loose because he's got to get his heels on the line of scrimmage. Our free safety fits off his inside hip so he can overlap. The mic taps the center, works down the line, and our spur is a fold player. Our front side corner, he's a run pass player. On the back side, we got to chase. I think this is really important. When we talk about the weak side, you got to make sure that free safety, it's exactly like when we get the strong side on, except the free safety better make sure this isn't a block and slip where he gets the, he gets the dump pass behind him. Everything else is the same. But this is the one I want to talk about. This happens all the time. We talk about how we fit the perimeter run. How do we fit internal run? If we were to get like ISO or inside zone, how do we fit it? Things we talk about all the time is we'll have both our backers hit the ball carry in the hole. Both of our spurs, our ball outside, I support ball inside, I fold and fit. I'm going to fold. I'm going to fold. I start to make the triangle as the free safety fits. I have this triangle between these three players. And what happens is as my corners start to get depth, they will start to fit in the triangle so you don't get that ball that goes whoosh, right down the middle. You have to learn to fit. I think one of the things that helps our defense is we spend a lot of time in, rec in, in recognition and communications. And what we do in our defense is we do certain things. And I want you to know if you're out here, you know, who we're going to study their defense. Here's what you need to understand. 33% of our defense is a coverage. 33% of our defense is a zone pressure. And 33% of our defense is a man pressure. And what I'm going to talk about just right now is that 33% of zone pressure. Or zone, excuse me, of zone coverage. When we talk about coverage, we primarily play 51 in 52. Sometimes we play 50, we play 41, but we are 51 in 52. And here's what you need to understand. Two by two, we're playing what's called. Three by one to the field, we have an adjustment that's very similar to the call play. And then anytime we are in three by one to the boundary, you're in an empty set or you have two or three in the backfield, we are always in the same front when we are in a coverage. So I'm going to go to those, so those ones that are common. Anytime you get with two in the backfield, okay, play an old school cover five. Cover five was built to stop the eye. So you know what? You line up with two in the backfield, we're going to run cover five. It's as good as we got. You line up and empty, we're going to play Vern. And Vern is our best coverage, best coverage versus empty sets. It's mini cover two. I'll get into it in a different topic. Okay, but it's the best coverage we feel we have against empty. You give us three by one to the boundary, we're going to play something called Crazy Ivan. You know what Crazy Ivan is? It's not 51, it's 15. Well, we'll play man to the field and we will play robber to the boundary. So if I, I, I don't care if the call is 51, 52, 41, or 42, you give us two in the backfield, it's always five. You go empty and we're in a coverage, it's always Vern. You go three by one to the boundary, it's always Crazy Ivan. So if I teach my kids those common things and I'm in coverage 51, I make a 51 call, all right, and they come out in two by two, we're running it. If they come out three by one to the field, we're going to play solo. Well, what's solo, Coach Fox? Solo is nothing more than robber coverage. We're going to man the corner with a solo call and poach three from the backside. 52 is what? It's five to the field. It's five to the field. And it's covered two to the boundary. Well, why would we run that? Well, every defense has its strengths and weaknesses. If you're better than us at the X position than our corner, I can't leave my kid on an island. You'll kill him. Maybe your number two receiver is outstanding and you want to man up against my, my uh, Spurs in man coverage. I don't want to see that. So I'll play 52. I'll play with a hard corner, deep safety, just like we did in 1975. But here's the difference. If you go three by one, I'm not going to play solo. I'm not going to give that, that, that receiver the benefit of the doubt of being one-on-one. -on -one. I'm going to play Vern so I can play old school cover two over 10 and man the wide guy and play mini two. 
If I'm in 41, and usually we get checked into 41, it's when people over split us, but I can play 41, I can play 41, which is read coverage, read coverage evil, we call it, and this is why we named it. I'm going to tell you right now. Vern is named after the actor that played Mini Me in the Austin Powers movies. Okay? Vern was the actor. And if you go onto my Notre Dame Twitter page, when Vern passed away for two years, we had his picture on our Twitter page and we prayed for Vern. Okay? Because we named a coverage after him. Why? It's called Mini Two, but Vern means Mini Two. Well, how does, what's, What's close, when we play 41 and we're playing read coverage and we man the widest guy and we read two and three, we name that after Dr. Evil. And we call that evil. Why? Because it's fun and we let the kids name our stuff. If we let our kids name it, they understand it. And the key for us is communication. We have to be able to communicate. Now, when we talk about coverage, remember, we are a split cover communication. The first digit is to the field. The second digit is to the boundary. We play mostly 51, 52, and 41. We could play 42. We haven't done it. We must have everybody on the same page. And our kids do a really good job with this. We are always lined up for the most part. We had one breakdown in alignment last year. Gave up a touchdown. It was the last time we did it. Okay, it was in our first game. We have automatics to be used on each formation. The key here is leadership and ownership. If you want to play defense, defense is hard. Coaching defense is hard, okay? But if you want to play, you better have a level of ownership and understand not how your position plays, but how your position works with other people's position. You must have an understanding of how all the coverages work. And as I talk about 51 and I get in to two by two alignment right here, all we're doing is talking a little bit about base defense. Our line is set to the tailbacks. It's two by two. We're playing cover five. Our spurs head up number two. Our corners at seven and one creeping to nine and two. Our free safety is 11 down to nine. Our backers are minus to the boundary. Our corner and wolf are anywhere from six and a half to eight yards over the top of one and two. And what we want them to do is use that as a starting position before we start to move. Okay? You start here and then you move. Our kids want to jump into it too soon. And then if they go three, if they if they line up, you know, we're gonna play 51. And what does that mean? Half read. Rob to buzz flat run wheel. He is playing cross pull to near back. There's no cross pull. He's vertical. He's got him. We're man and man. We have a zone side and we have a man side. All right. We play cut off man to the boundary. Our corner will be in press. Our wolf will be at five and a half yards. When we play cover five to the field, we teach our kids, here's your components. The deep player is the deep player. He is a half read player. He has to see everything and keep it in front of him. Our spur is a perimeter match player. He buzzes flat and runs wheel. Our free safety and our backer are pattern read defenders as they read number two and number three. Our deep corner, he's a half read. He's got to work hard, okay? He works from seven by one to nine by two, hips square. He's going to stay on top of everything. He's going to stay. He's going to split the difference between two and one. He's going to stay on top of, one, of both in favor number one. He's going to favor number one because number two has a robber running with him. If two voids the, the zone, he squeezes one and plays him man for man. If one voids, he squeezes number two and plays over the top of number two who should have a robber with him. Here's my field corner creepy. Here's the vertical routes. He's splitting the difference between one and two. He's splitting the difference between one and two. He's staying on top of one. 
there's the robber. He can help. He will have vertical help. And if the robber is with him, he can keep favoring to one. If number one stops being a vertical threat, the corner comes over the top of number two. If number one stops being a vertical threat, we get a double team on that. We get a double team on that. If we get the deep switch, if it is after six yards, we have to stay because your job is to take away the post and this guy's job is to play all vertical routes after six yards. Now, so we're sitting in here and I'm in my back pedal and number two runs away and I start to squeeze one. And I see that number two has gone away. Well, what do we tell our corners? If number two disappears, squeeze number one man for man. So if he runs the dig route, you can compete on that dig route. You don't have to go play back because there's no other threat to your half the field. And that's helped us. Perimeter match players, buzz flat run wheel. We want them to match number one. When they open their hips and run, we want him to get underneath number one if it's a hitch. If number one disappears inside, we come back and box and we play screen and draw. If he runs a wheel and number one disappears and number two's to the flat, we turn and buzz the wheel and we match it. If he turns up field, we bang it with our outside hand, show, throw our hand down, go hip to hip, squeeze shoulder to shoulder, and we compete for the wheel route. Free safety. You have the vertical route at six yards. If he goes six and under, he's yours. Ten and dig, he's yours. Six and post, he's yours. If he goes out, you rob the curl zone. That's how it gets its name, Jesse James. Okay, robber coverage. If two goes out, the free safety drives the curl. And it is the man in the curl zone. Sometimes it's like a stop route. You got to go hunt him down. You got to go get him. Okay. Now, one of the things that happens is if we get a shallow, I don't know why they got it drawn that way. If we get a shallow across, we want our free safety and turn and to drive, all right, the shallow to the dig. So let's say you're playing one of those, you know, air raid type teams and they're coming with the mesh and they're coming with the mesh. If number two goes under, and this guy is coming flat. You're not looking to play the dig. There's no dig there. Okay, what are you looking to do? You're looking to come down and knock the living, you know, cow, you know, manure out of that guy. You want to strike him. You want to strike him. Backer has the same robber rules as the free safety. Okay? If he's reading cross pull the near back and that guy runs vertical, you are going to run with it. If he goes out, you have the man in the curl zone. If he comes under, you help on the dig. The man side. If you're going to play man coverage, you got to have a dude. And that's one of the problems. All right, there's a lot of years where we played 52 because we didn't have a dude. Right now, we got two dudes that can play there, maybe three. So we play 51 because we think our corner is better than anybody they can roll out there. We think he's really good. We play cutoff man. Okay? And we are going to play inside leverage all over the place. The only time we don't is we will pass a direct shallow that comes across the zone side and we will try to cut somebody off. Okay? Our wolf is an off man. He's at like five and a half yards. And if he gets a direct shallow route, he too will cut the crosser coming back from the zone side and pass him over. Our Mike has the tailback. And he has the tailback to the man side. He has the tailback even he has him even if he's away from the man side and on the zone side. Let's take a quick look. So let me let me let me help you here. So right now this is my zone side to the right, or over here to where I'm messing with the cursor. Over here we have the man side. All right, he's got to take off. He's got to dig. We're manning it everywhere. My mic has the tailback. And the tailback goes out. And when he goes out, he's expecting to see the crossing route. He should come down and he should attack and force that mic to come across the top of him or he should knock him to the ground. And that's how we want to work on that. In solo, our corner has man, our wolf poaches. And that allows our, our, our backer to be more aggressive so we don't get hurt on four verticals off of play action. 
when we poach, the free safety, he has to be in a position, or the wolf has to be in a position to handle number two vertical. If not, or number three vertical. If three vertical, if we're key in three and three's out fast and there's a new vertical threat, that is the new number three, man. You gotta take that. You gotta take that, all right? And the last thing I wanna talk about is when we are in man coverage on the boundary side and the tailback is to the boundary, our mic has to be outside the tailback in order to be able to play with him in some leverage. He has to almost play in a C-split or we get into some trouble. They go into the boundary, we roll down, we play five into the boundary, we play man to the field, we do not bring him all the way over. If number three is going to go vertical, he's going to bring it back to us. The free safety doesn't cross the hash until he reads, and our corner's in man. We like to put the, free, the spur in a position where he can eat up some space. And it's the same rules. If three's vertical, we poach. If three's flat and two's attacking, he's the new number three. Now, if they go three by one into the boundary and the tailback goes to the field, I can guarantee they're going to flare him and they're going to try to isolate. It happens all the time. Our backer should be in a C-split and be in a leverage position to play that tailback. When we play empty, we man the widest guy and we play old school cover two over the rest of the 10, and the linebackers match the inside receivers. Three by two, man, two over 10, and we are robbing the inside receivers. All right, they're, three, they're two by three. We are matching the two inside receivers. We are funneling this guy like it's old school cover two. We're playing man to man over here, and we are playing cover two over two thirds of the field. And that's why I like this coverage, guys because we don't have that big hole in the middle of the field because we're only defending two thirds of it. The other thing is with robber players on their vertical routes, what we also have is somebody running through the hole with them. Four by one, man, funnel, match, match, half over two thirds. It's pretty good for us, guys. It's pretty good for us. Four by one into the boundary, okay? We're manned here. We have no one to funnel, so we kind of squeeze him in the box, and we move everybody over, and what we do is we just match up our inside receivers. They come out in 21, it's old school cover five. And fellas, that's how, that's, that's kind of the, the overview of what we do in coverage and alignments. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna break this down into like 14 more parts. And I'm gonna talk to you about all these specific components and how we teach it. That was kind of long, I might have bored you, but from now on I promise you it's gonna be good stuff. It's gonna be good stuff. Thank you very much.